We have another user talk coming up next uh, from Vlad Ungureanu. Hello, my name is Vlad and I'm a software engineer at Palantir Technologies. To give you a brief intro on Palantir, we were founded uh, 16 years ago. And uh, since our inception, uh, the main purpose of the company is to solve the hardest data problems of the world's most important uh, organizations. Uh, here are some quick examples of what we do. Palantir is used for cyber defense uh, for larger institutions and nation states. Our software is used in support of anti-terror missions in the West, uh, intel gathering, and also mission planning in the field. Ferrari also uses Palantir to make F1 cars faster and more efficient. In 2017, we decided to build our next generation cloud computing platform. We called it Rubix, and we made the decision to use Kates as the foundational building block for, uh, for it. The main type of workloads that we run on Rubix are Apache Spark. One of the key features of Rubix is that uh, every machine has a lifetime of uh, maximum 48 hours. This brings two advantages. Uh, first one is faster patching um, for CVEs. You deploy a new machine image uh, to the fleet and in 48 hours, you know that the CV has been patched. The second one is resistance to advanced uh, persistent threats. If an attacker compromises a machine, it will have 48 hours to um, uh, uh, to do any bad things, and then uh, the machine will uh, will die away. Uh, this behavior uh, can be easily detected by our infosec team if the attacker continues uh, over and over again to breach machines. In 2019, we gave a talk at uh, KubeCon Europe, and since then, Rubik's expand, expanded in four more Amazon regions. We doubled the number of case nodes that we're running across the fleet to 5,000. Also, uh, per day, uh, we destroy and rebuild almost 40,000 instances. And also during a day, uh, it's not uncommon for us to run uh, 1.4 million pods. Uh, in 2017, when the project started, we were running Calico in uh, overlay mode. Uh, we uh, found that Calico is not uh, suited for our type of workload. So we're looking to solve something else. Uh, in 2018, when Lyft released their IPVLAN, uh, native VPC routing CNI plugin, we decided to migrate to it. Uh, migrating uh, to it uh, went fairly smooth, uh, but uh, it opened uh, two, uh, two main problems. First one was uh, the lack of firewalling in the Lyft uh, CNI plugin. And the second one was that uh, every machine had to call the Amazon API to attach uh, ENIs and IPs, uh, which caused severe rate limitings on, uh, on, on, the, on the EC2 API side. Uh, to solve the firewalling problem, we decided to build an in-house solution based on IP tables. Um, the implementation wasn't uh, wasn't good enough. The main reason is it didn't support uh, DNS filtering. So at that point in time, we decided to look in the open source community to use something off the shelf. Uh, so in early 2019, we discovered Cilium uh, and we decided to transition to it. Realizing the benefits of the native uh, VPC routing, we worked together with the Cilium team to build the Amazon ENI IPAM integration in the Cilium operator. As of late 2019, all our production workloads are now running Cilium with the Amazon ENI IPAM, and also we're running uh, level three, level four, and DNS DNS based policy in enforcement mode. As the security of uh, of the network evolved, we have to we had to evolve the observability of it uh, as well. To do so, we decided to install Hubble. Uh, in the past, we were able to observe uh, uh, network flows just at the edge, but now with Hubble, we're able to get uh, network flow observability at the host level. Uh, our CERT team gets a lot of mileage from Hubble in two main areas. First one is observing. Uh, DNS traffic, and the second one is uh, observing which uh, processes are doing exec, bind, and connect uh, system calls. So with these two things uh, in our tool belt, we can get an easy 360 degree traceability of uh, network calls uh, associated to a Kubernetes pod. And then using Kate's audit logs, we're able to trace uh, back to the platform user that, uh, that launched that pod. In the same security area, we have another challenge, which is uh, top of our mind. A lot of compute workloads that we run in the platform often run uh, untrusted uh, code that either be written by a data scientist or uh, code that is written to train a uh, machine learning uh, model. 
these workloads usually retrieve data from a from, from place, they process it locally, and then they upload it back. But to do so, they need some sort of authentication material in their API requests. Uh, given that we do not control the code that operates on, uh, on the data, uh, we don't really want uh, the code to have access to this authentication material. Uh, we want to start first by verifying that the authentic material is not tampered with. Uh, for this purpose, we're looking at using Cilium coupled with eBPF socket redirection to send the packets to Envoy and then Envoy to do the verification on its end. After that, strategically, we want to be in a place that we're able to swap the authentication material on the fly uh, using the, um, the same tools, raising the security bar even higher. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, questions will be over eBPF uh, Summit Slack channel. Thank you very much, Vlad. Uh, and definitely a quick shout out to Vlad. He's not only an awesome end user giving us lots of feedback, he has actually also contributed various features to Cilium and is part of the core team uh, of Cilium as well. I think uh, awesome to have you on the team, Vlad. And actually, I want to uh, give a quick uh, look into the questions of Gobin has, has asked. Why, 20, uh, why 48 hours specifically? Why not 24? And Vlad has, entered, uh, has answered, we choose 48 hours mostly because we have long running Spark jobs that can't execute that quick. So for jobs that need more than 48 hours runtime, we try to make them stash data and then retrieve it and continue processing. 